to, to speak at uh, backup nights. <laughs> I was last week in uh, Cape Town and we did the garden route and uh, um, in order to prepare basically the presentation I took some no uh, like uh, I took some notes. It took me three hours and I said I couldn't stop talking about fuck ups and, uh, <laughs> and I said okay this would be a bit too much. So I just want to give you the uh, uh, the highlights uh, and the key summaries we are uh, talking. So I'm basically, I'm half Italian, half German. Um, uh, well, was basically born in an entrepreneurial background. My uh, parents were basically selling fruits and vegetables in the wholesale. And um, yeah, like uh, I want to share a bit of the bit of the story. So basically, since almost two years, I'm having this kind of a background picture. Do more of what makes you happy. Because at the end, uh, yes, you're going to do some fuck-ups, but at the end, uh, you will learn a lot from it. The, um, the problem normally... Oh, where's this one? Where is this one? I can click this one. This would be good. One back. So, um, so since I was born in an entrepreneurial background, I always tried to sell things. So when I was 12 years old, I was selling lollipops. I went to the other side of the street, bought up to 100 uh, Chupa Chups uh, lollipops, bought it for 20 cents and sold it for 60 cents. Mm -hmm. The whole business basically was very trendy <coughs> and it lasts, uh, I think, uh, a month because then the trend was over and we ran out of business. Because uh, all the others, they were not basically they were afraid to cross the street at this time, but we had no follow-on product. So basically it was the first business we, we buried. Another business, we are, uh, like I basically started, was I was selling socks. I was um, 18 years old and I was buying socks on, uh, on eBay. In the beginning, it was like 100% cotton. Then I realized, okay, if I can sell the socks for one euro, it doesn't make sense to just buy it for 50 cents. Let's go for like, cheaper prices, okay, jeopardizing also quality. So I bought them for 10 <coughs> cents from China. Unfortunately, it was not anymore 100% cotton. And 80% uh, <laughs> was basically lighter. And the people which bought it, they just bought once because the feet were starting to smell a bit. And <laughs> <laughs> so, um, like as a learning, number one, be careful with trends. They might run out if you don't have follow-on products, and um, don't jeopardize quality. Like where we basically made a bit of a home run was uh, I was also importing coffee and Italian delicatessen from Italy to Germany, and uh, like driving with uh, 800 kilos of uh, Lavazza coffee in uh, in an A class, buying it for three euro ninety five and selling it for eighteen. Mm -hmm. It was working, and uh, like basically here we basically hit the spot on, uh, let's say, finding the right fit to the market. The another basically fuck up is at the end, if you don't start things, this is actually the things which hurt the most. I don't know who knows this quote. 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed with the things you didn't do by the ones you did do. So throw away the bow line, sail away, leave the safe harbor, catch the trade winds in your sails, explore, dream, discover. So if you have something which you want to do, do it. Don't wait too long. Don't over strategize. Like we had, we were working with two friends on a concept which was called P2P equity. So people are basically investing in other people's businesses through the internet. It was at the end like uh, later, we didn't start it because we overcomplicated things. And uh, I think three, four years later, uh, Kickstarter came out and uh, <laughs> said, okay, fuck, uh, we didn't do this. Same thing with another company, which was, uh, we call it JetQuote. So it was like, a, like an Uber, but for private jets and for, uh, for helicopters. We were, let's say, over-strategizing, over, uh, uh, let's say, negotiating with potential founders and whatever. We didn't start it. We really didn't go for it. I, but now there are companies and businesses which are coming up like this. So the, at the end, don't over strategize, go for it. If you have something, don't be afraid. Same thing, be unafraid to fail. And I think this is the, the topic with, uh, with the coffee again. Like we set up a, a business where we, um, let's say export, like importing fruits, let's say uh, Italian delicatessen, like coffee, uh, like 
olive oil uh, and pasta and sauces. The fuck up here was basically we uh, were transporting this. We also imported rapa and uh, like uh, a lot of uh, limoncello. We were selling it, we made good money, but at some point of time, basically, even if you sell it from Italy to Germany, you avoid Switzerland because uh, the customs. Yeah, after a while, I think after six months, uh, the customs were there and they asked for the taxes. Uh, I said, okay, but you know, we're in Europe. It was 2004. You're in Europe, so why should we pay ta uh, like uh, customs and taxes? Yeah, at the end, uh, they said, okay, there are certain laws uh, also for uh, coffee, especially, and also for, uh, uh, let's say, for drinks. So be aware of the, let's say, of the legal consequences of what you do. But again, we made money. We paid a fine, but at the end, we started the thing, and it's still running. The company is, uh, like, we're having two stores now in Germany, which are basically... Um, which are basically selling uh, Italian delicatessen, and it's still there. So even if you are running into some trouble, you should still start it. Don't be afraid to, to do things. Here, I think this is uh, another important thing is, uh, it's important that you have a team, that you don't try to do the things on your own. Even if you have a good idea, be aware of your limitations. Like, um, like a very important point was, it needs to be a mix between experts in your own field, because you will never be as good as, let's say, somebody always uh, working on some kind of tech topics. If you're a business person, don't try to become to an 80% of, of a tech person. We did a lot of problems there. On the, on the team side, be careful with friends. It's a two-sided uh, two knife. Why? Because it can be the best thing you can imagine. On the other side, it can be also, let's say, the negative thing. Some of the fuck-ups which happened here, I lost, uh, for the last company, I lost two friends because uh, we said, okay, let's do the business together. We were too similar, we started fighting, and we don't talk since more than half a year. Another person, since I'm, my background is basically venture capital, a friend of mine invested in one deal, and I said, okay, be careful. It's your own risk. I didn't recommend it to you. I just showed him on what kind of deal we're working on. And um, he invested in it. He invested 500,000 euro, and the deal went belly up. He lost all the money. The problem is if your money, if your company made money on this deal, you're running into some kind of a conflict with yourself. Your best friend lost 500,000 and you got a commission. Be careful with something like this. Um, so I don't accept any more money from friends. Same thing with be careful if you are, one of your friends is a supplier of a startup. You think that normally a supplier there is no risk. There is a risk because the startup might go belly up and they don't pay the supplier. Happened also. So. There are things which might be uh, difficult if you involve friends and especially family doing business. Uh, that's another topic. Be careful with the experts. Um, they have always their own agenda. For instance, now I think these times we are very aware of, uh, um, let's say, uh, raising money, which is at the end equity. The family business was in fruits and vegetables. So we were selling fruits and vegetables from Italy to Germany. The company was doing roughly 30 million in revenues with a margin of 10 to 15 percent. So the, but the market changed a bit, meaning we were selling to the to the wholesale chains like Aldi, Lidl, Edeka, and uh, the bankers basically said, "You're running out of working capital. Um, I cannot give your company any more a loan. So, but I give you personally a loan, and you can do a capital increase." So it's not that the bankers basically recommended you to do a capital increase on your company. They wanted to give you, like my family, basically a loan personally of 500,000 euro, where he, my father in this case, could do a capital raise in the business. The problem is if you get a loan on the personal side, you need to make at least a million euro in profits because you need to pay taxes in order to pay it back. So 
2004, the company filed for bankruptcy. It was exactly three months before university, before I started. And uh, so this was one chapter with, the, with some kind of so-called experts. We started another two companies. One was, like, uh, as mentioned, uh, the business for Italian delicatessen. The second one, we set up a new agency for fruits and vegetables. Like I was 21, my brother was 18. We employed my mother. And um, like it was a funny situation because in uh, like half a year after the business started, it was the end of the year, the tax advisor said, okay, um, do we have all the invoices? I said, yes, okay, we opened the, the, the box and said, hey, all the invoices are there. Hey, that's awesome. We just made in six months 250,000 in profit. That's cool. It's like similar like the business we did before. January, February, March, and April were somehow a bad month. Like we were, set, we were buying cheaper than we sold, but we made 40,000 loss, 50,000 loss, another 30. So at the end, I said, we, we didn't know why we basically lost money. And we realized a little bit later, those were the invoices from October, September, like October, November, December, which came in. So basically, even if you ask a tax advisor, you need to double check what kind of, uh, let's say, what kind of decision they are taking. So we didn't do a 250,000 in profit. We did only a 40. So basically, I was 21 when we had roughly 200,000 in debt together with my brother. And it was right after the insolvency where we weren't even able to afford to set up a limited liability company. In this case, it was a blessing because we didn't need to call the insolvency because we were personal liable. So be careful if you talk to so-called experts. They have always their own agenda. They want to give you a loan if you need it or not. They want to give you equity if you need it or not. They base your decisions on the input you give them. That's why the team is also super important. Try to team up with people which are knowledgeable in their field to double check the specialists because they have their own agenda. Yeah, always be careful with uh, basically with changes. Meaning, again, I mentioned that we had a business which was 15 years running in the fruits and vegetable business. The Eurozone was started. So if you do trade from Italy to Germany as an agent, it was super difficult in the past for the wholesale companies to buy direct in Italy because you had currencies, you had uh, customs and whatever. Like, why did we have the insolvency? Why? Because the businesses from Germany started to buy directly in Italy. So you were, the business was changing. Instead of that they were paying you in advance, they were paying you after 120 days. The suppliers in Italy, where you said, okay, I'm going to pay them in 120 days, they needed to have the money directly because they were also running short of cash. So the whole business was changing and we were not, we, we didn't expect this. That was basically one of the reasons why the insolvency happened. So be careful with the changes. Uh, that's another topic. Also, be careful with the changes. It can happen directly. That's basically a current x-ray of my spine. Um, I am a passionate cyclist. I'm normally doing between nine and 10,000 kilometers on a road bike. I was five kilometers running on a, on a mountain bike. <coughs> Fell down, couldn't get rid of the click pedals, and uh, broke my spine. So even if you think that everything is basically, you need to be, that they're working out, you need to be aware of sudden changes. Because if the doctor tells you, okay, tomorrow is your operation, you might not be able to move your legs. Like, be aware that something like this can happen. So be aware of changes. It can be faster than you think. Also here, if you think that you have the best cards in hand, mm -hmm. I don't know who's aware of poker a bit. Four aces is not the best cards. And also, like, there's a big chance that you win, but don't jeopardize playing your best hand if you because you might only do a short-term win. Your relationship with your suppliers, with your partners, might be also important that you fall down. Meaning we had a, a massive deal with uh, our last company, a credit card company, which paid us insane money to, to start our business. Like the, everybody was laughing at the end how crazy the deal was. They were paid, like, I don't know who's aware of the concept of customer acquisition. 
we basically got paid that we are getting their clients. So basically we had negative marketing costs. It was, it was an awesome deal and we made quite some money. We employed people, we, we started it up, but then basically they, prom they promised, us, uh, promised us 50 to 60 clients a month, high net worth, ultra high net worth individuals. But basically we were playing our hands. The company realized, okay, fuck, we are fucked, the credit card company. We are not doing this, we are not scaling. We didn't grow and we stayed with 50 clients, but we employed people in order to go to the 300, 500 clients they, uh, they promised us. So it also for the long-term relationship, it might be better to throw down even the best cards you can have. I don't know who speaks German. Like, it's basically, it's, uh, wrong, it's uh, like the misinterpretation of uh, an optimist. So you think that everything goes right, but at the end here the statement is, the only thing which is basically mi missing are the hookers. So you're feeling that you are in a very comfortable situation, you enjoy life, but at the end, you might not be aware in what kind of shitty situation you are. Like with the credit card company. <coughs> so, as a summary, yes, you're never ready. If you're an entrepreneur, jump. You miss opportunities if you don't do it. You can build the things on the way down if you're running. It's, pro it's probably better to say sorry sometimes than actually saying, yes, now I'm ready. You're never ready with your business. And that's also a thing. <laughs> <laughs> don't be... <laughs> it could be all <laughs> Don't complain. Or <laughs> like, uh, everybody's crying. Uh, like, uh, it's... Uh, yeah, everything is so bad. But at the end, Poor think it can be so We realize that. So basically, I hope that... Uh, there were some takeaways, some learnings. Uh, if you, we are currently setting up another company, which is basically try to help companies to avoid certain fuckups. Why? Because we saw a lot of it. Like, uh, so if you want to have a chat later, yeah, let me know. We look for people who are already either to avoid or to have fuckups. Thank you.